Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have the latest on the very cold and potentially very snowy weather we're going to be seeing over the course of the next seven days. We've had a big deluge of rain spread through earlier this morning and now on the back side of this low pressure system we've got cold air sinking southwards. The proper arctic air will arrive for all by around Monday morning but it is a it's turning progressively colder through the next 36 hours um, with snow coming more widespread over northern areas and starting to come to low-lying areas as well as we head through the weekend. There will be some marginal snow around, especially within some of these showers towards coastal areas and low-lying areas for the next sort of 12 to 24 hours for pretty much everything will be starting to fall to snow as we head into the early part of next working week. So in today's video, we'll have a look at the live radar, have a look what that's showing right now. We'll look at the weather warnings as we do now have snow warnings issued um, and ice warnings issued for many northern areas. Again, they're not particularly widespread yet, but I suspect they will become more widespread when uh, certainty does increase um, perhaps in the next day or two. We'll then look through the various short range models, look at the UKV, look at the Arpege, and have a look at the GEM as well for the precipitation charts, uh, just to compare what they're showing. So there's gonna be a lot of showers around and features that could provide more significant and um, prolonged snow in places. We'll then have a look at the longer range. Of course, we've got to keep up to date with what's happening throughout the rest of January with the GFS, GEM, ECMWF, and the ensembles as yes, this cold spell is likely to only last around four or five days, ending most likely through Friday, maybe Thursday night areas further westwards, maybe further eastwards, Friday night into Saturday, but generally Friday. And after that, it does look likely higher pressure could start to build in. And there are signs that it could start to build to our north and our east, up towards Scandinavia, and some of the runs in the longer range are starting to pull an easterly wind in. Nothing significant at this stage, but just signs that things could stay relatively cool and cold towards the end of January, even when this initial cold spell does subside. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if we do start on the live radar, you can see that big weather front is now across much of northern and western Europe. And behind it, we've just got a lot of heavy showers pushing in with these over higher ground in northern England and Scotland starting to fall with a wintry nature, falling as snow over uh, especially higher ground, um, low lying areas, more of a wintry mix to rain. Um, we do have rain and wind warnings issued for parts of Northern Ireland um, and parts of Scotland as well, as we still have this very heavy heavy rain coming in on these showers but this will increasingly turn to snow or at least to a wintry flavor over the course of the next 24 hours and this is sort of the theme as this center of the low which is positioned over scotland clears to our east then the floodgates open to the arctic now i've put on the temperatures as of around half three it's not a particularly cold day but you can see that cold air filtering in from the north still some yellows in the south and the east indicating we still slightly milder air there but the cold front has sweet uh, has swept through so cold air is sinking southwards where we've got these lighter blues temperatures in around the low single digits if not towards freezing um and that will become more widespread over the next 24 to 36 hours some areas in scotland is probably not going to get much above freezing for another seven days now so yes very cold air is coming in but it'll only become widespread through sunday night into monday where all areas through monday will be below average and cold. Now, if we do go over to the weather warnings, we now have five days of warnings, including today. We've got this rain and wind warning for parts of Northern Ireland and parts of Scotland from 2 p.m. today until 1 a.m. tomorrow morning. Again, it's for those heavy showers and strong blustery winds coming in from that northwesterly flow. Again, main issue will probably be the wind, but of course, with a lot of rain already on the ground, there could be some surface water flooding issues, 45 to 50 miles per hour, and maybe 60 to 70 miles per hour around the coast, high likelihood lower in the impact. We did have rain warnings issued for southwestern parts, and they have expired, but the issues there are not over. Remember, it takes many hours for uh, rainfall to collect into the rivers, so we could still see substantial flooding in the west and the southwest over the course of the next 12 to 24 hours, maybe even longer in places. So yes, there's no weather warning issued here, but there could be flooding still in those areas. And again, I'll direct you to the Environmental Agency website where they do have uh, quite a few flood warnings issued right now. Uh, and of course, 
if you're on social media, you've probably been seeing them putting a lot of flood defences up on some of them big rivers um, as they are going to be peaking very soon and could be some big issues. So please, if you are in those areas that are prone to river flooding, please do have a look at the necessary warnings. Now we do have our first wintry warning though coming in to force 10pm tonight until 10am tomorrow. Icy surfaces and high ground snow leading to some difficult travelling conditions through Saturday night into Sunday morning. Again, mainly snow over high ground, about 400 metres, 5 to 10 centimetres. It'll gradually ease overnight with clear spells developing. And of course, with those clear spells, there will be a frost starting to appear, temperatures falling to below freezing, and that's why there's a widespread ice warning through Scotland, heading into parts of northern England, high uh, high on the likelihood of lower end of the impact. That ice warning continues in tomorrow, and we've got that rain and uh, wind warning, and then with this widespread snow and ice warning for northern Isles of Scotland from 5pm tomorrow until 10am on Wednesday. So pretty much a blanket warning, and I suspect it will be um, changed, uh, and will be increased, these warnings, um, more widespread as well, but this is where we've got the most certainty. As we see from the models, there are definitely pretty much guaranteed wintry showers pushing into northern Scotland. Elsewhere, there will be wintry showers, but the certainty isn't high enough for warnings to be issued yet. Again, it's likely we're going to see a few centimetres over low-lying areas, maybe 10 to 15 centimetres at moderate hills of 200 metres and above. And of course, uh, that will change. Again, coastal areas will struggle a little bit um, to see uh, accumulating snow, but anywhere inland, I suspect, by early next week, by Monday, Tuesday time, it will be readily settling with the ground and air temperatures below freezing. High likelihood, lower end of the impact, and I suspect we could see more warnings issued, maybe even amber warnings issued as well. And you can see that warning runs all the way to Wednesday. So if we do now have a look at the all-important precipitation charts for the next five days, you can see that big flood of rain that moved through earlier today. And you can see the back edge showers and wintriness coming in as well. Now, as that spreads southwards, that frontal system, a bit of an occluded front there, it will be snow over the higher ground, maybe into low-lying areas for a time. You can see some more showers pushing into parts of Wales and southwest England. Again, wintriness over the hills. And eventually, as it clears south with this initial frontal system, as we enter Sunday, you can see quite a bit of rain in the west, but some of this falling as snow, but still the coldest there hasn't quite reached there. And you can see the proper Arctic air mass, very unstable air mass, bringing widespread wintry showers to northern Isles of Scotland. And that's why we've got that warning issue, because there is pretty much uh, very high certainty this is going to come off. And you can see all of those showers are falling as snow. So there's no uh, marg uh, marginal um, wet, uh, rain or snow there. Uh, all falling as snow in that air mass, which will be taking over through Sunday into Monday. Now that air mass will spread through and you can see a bit of a uh, weather system there moving in as it engages in the cold air. We can actually see some heavy snow through the north, north Midlands into northwest England, maybe generally north, uh, northern England as well. Again, you need to keep an eye on that. Different models have slightly different intensities and positioning of this, but again, could drop a few centimetres of snow in places and it does look quite intense. You can see that low pressure system to our south that we had been highlighting over the last few days that could give some heavy snow through southern areas has veered more towards the south. So UKV and the GFS yesterday which were showing it further inland were in the minority in the end and the runs that kept it further southwards uh, that is the likely situation again it's northern extent is uncertain it could push slightly further northwards and engage a little bit and yet maybe give some snow of the higher ground in southern england but we're not expecting anything too major there just clipping the far southeast with some rain and that system through the north midlands and north england eventually clearing through and maybe giving some snow for the far southeast as it heads through again have to keep an eye on how it does hold together and how intense it is but in this situation wouldn't be surprised if much of north england the midlands and parts of east anglia in the southeast woke up to a covering of snow on Monday and maybe even some significant snow in places. The showers just continue to pack into the north and the west and we do see more systems in the far southwest. Eyes through Tuesday into the southwest with heavy showers and maybe some heavy snow pushing in uh, for a time there through southwest England, maybe into parts of Isle of Wight, Southampton, Portsmouth, those areas could see some heavy snow pushing in. Again, a small system that could change positioning but it is a small little feature, uh, so it could be northwards, eastwards, westwards, southwards, and it will give some precipitation, which will fall as snow in lands.
Eventually it does clear, and then we see more northwesterly showers pushing in. Generally a dry day through Wednesday, maybe a bit of snow clipping the far southeast there with a few showers. And then as the cold spell does eventually break down, we see low pressure run down the east coast more, and then we can see more showers towards northern and eastern areas. So through Wednesday into Thursday, there again there, different models showing different intensities for that. So we'll have to see how that does develop. You can see the upper air temperatures are very cold, and even towards the end of the run, still in a very cold air mass, but higher pressure is taking over. Brief ridge before low pressure runs in from the west, and that does mean, as you can see here, the isobars are not quite as tight with that ridge of high pressure building in, and it's going to be cutting off those showers. Now, if you look at the max temperatures, it's going to be bitterly cold in this upcoming week. You can see today, this afternoon, it is cold out there with the very strong uh, westerly winds, making it feel even colder, but widely average conditions. Far southeast, slightly above, further north and westward, slightly below. But overall, it's generally an average day for January. But it's going to be turning much below average over the next few days. He sees tonight's temperatures widely around the low signal digits, if not perhaps below freezing in places. You see temperatures widely around that five to seven degree mark in the south, further north it's more towards freezing in Scotland, widely below freezing, very cold conditions there. As we head through Sunday into Monday, overnight temperatures widely below freezing, a hard overnight frost for many areas where we see clearer skies, maybe not far south and east as we still got a bit of lingering cloud there, and through Monday temperatures will hardly get above freezing in many areas, even in southern England, maybe one or two degrees in places, elsewhere widely uh, around the low single digits and not below freezing. As we head through Monday night, a widespread bitterly cold night, temperatures widely around the minus 5 to minus 10 point, extremely cold conditions, everything's going to be frozen as we wake up, even areas in the south getting towards minus 5 or lower than that, and again that just emphasises how anything falling out of the sky will be falling as snow, and you can see through Tuesday afternoon, it truly is a bitterly cold, temperatures not getting above freezing in most areas. And through into Wednesday, again, bitterly cold overnight, widely minus 5 to minus 10. And through Wednesday afternoon, maybe slightly milder, but again, still around freezing to 2 degrees. And then finally, into Thursday, a widespread overnight frost once again, not quite as cold, but still well below freezing in most areas. Now, if you look at the arpege and compare the precipitation charts here to the, uh, to the latest UKV for the next um, couple of days. You can see that precipitation band head through, and then again, eventually, we see a bit of wintriness spread through in places in the north and west, but still a bit of rain around. Through Sunday, as we head into uh, Monday, you can see some heavy rain in the far south. Could get a bit of snow over higher ground, but again, not expecting too much. And you can see that system through the North Midlands. Nowhere near as intense. It's still there, but nowhere near as intense. And just showing a bit of rain there. Again, not quite picking up on that as much. Beyond that, we just see plenty of showers into the north and the west. And then we see that heavier snow potentially through Monday night into Tuesday, pivoting into the southwest. And again, actually accompanied into London and the East Anglia there and into the Midlands. Again, a system that the UKV had, but nowhere near as intense and as widespread. So you can see, although the models are all uh, on the broad scale, uh, exactly the same at this time frame, on a micro scale when, you know, uh, 50 miles in the positioning of a low press system um, and slight intensity changes can be between a, a dusting and five centimeters it is very important and you can see here um, our pairs not producing anything through Sunday night into Monday for the North Midlands Northern England but as we head into early hours of Tuesday producing quite something quite substantial in the south Elsewhere, showers continue to pack in, and that system heading through southeast England, really quite intense in its back edge, producing quite a bit of snow before eventually clearing, and then it's Wednesday seeing more wintry showers come in. So again, a very interesting arpege run, and again, that could produce heavy snow in places, and this is why we haven't seen weather warnings issued, because all the models, as I said, broadly have very similar pattern, but subtle differences in the intensities and positionings of any features, uh, and any little low pressure systems can vastly change the outcome from a dusting to a bit of cloud, perhaps to five to 10 centimeters of snow um, if we see one of these systems come off um, towards their uh, more intense range. So yeah, we'll have to see what happens, but very interesting from the UKV and the Arpege today. If you look at the GM, see how that does compare over the course of the next few days. Again, this is a more lower resolution model, but again, it's it's done very well uh, over the past few months with snow. So again, I want to have a look at this, and again, it shows it in pink, so it's very good 
uh, uh, distinguishing that. And you can see through Sunday into Monday, you can see that snow band through North Midlands and Northern England there. A bit more intense than the Arpege, but not quite as intense as the UKV. As we head through Monday into Tuesday, you can see that more snow, quite substantial snow into the far southwest. Not spreading further northwards and very little snow elsewhere, but could be many centimetres of snow in the far southwest there appearing. Elsewhere, more heavy showers and snowfall in northern and western areas. And eventually, when the breakdown starts to come and those showers transform further northwards and eastwards through parts of East Anglia, maybe the East Midlands, northeast England, we could see some more heavy snow showers there through Wednesday evening into Thursday. For eventually, it does break down with a weather front coming in from the west. Again, could initially give some very heavy snow on its leading edge. But you can see as it heads through, it all turns back to rain as mild air does push in very mild air so there's no chance that it holds on temperatures through friday in some areas in this run most likely going to be 10 degrees plus so turning much milder through the end of the week so you can see from all three runs very similar but very different in the very micro details and that it does make all the difference when forecasting snow so again we'll have to see what happens and we'll keep you up to date on these systems again things got to watch out for sunday night into monday then uh, monday into tuesday with that feature through the southwest maybe extending further northwards and eastwards as well and then of course as that wintriness transforms further eastwards there could be some more snow down the eastern edge of course uh again when i'm talking about this we're forgetting about the plenty of wintry showers in the north and the west but they're again they're not associated with any individual disturbance they're just frequent wintry showers that again are just going to be there and it's going to be almost impossible to forecast exactly how much anyone's going to get in any uh, individual place if you finally just have a look at the gfs again i know the gfs is the most accurate but i just want to have a look at some example snow depths again gfs is probably overdoing it slightly but again it just emphasizes where pretty much most places are likely to see falling snow because you can see through tuesday into wednesday a lot of snow around um, and you can see a widespread covering in many areas again it won't be like this because some of the snow will melt um, and again not the exact same positioning as this but you can see from this gfs run yes individual disturbances will give uh, high amounts in in small areas but through the full week the gfs has most areas through the british isles seeing some snow and potentially some lying snow as well so as i said we'll have to see how it does uh, come out again this gfs run won't be particularly accurate it is low resolution but it is just showing you an example of what could happen this upcoming week and again it's going to be very much now casting we will probably have the details for any individual snow event probably about a day before it comes so by tomorrow i do think we'll have sunday night into monday um well figured out and any warnings issued if needs be now if we go into the longer range we'll whiz through this quite quickly as i don't want to make the video drag out too much as i know most people are probably interested in what's happening next week of course it's important to make sure we keep up to date with the longer range as things can creep on up up on us very quickly especially when we concentrate on the short range like we will be doing over the course of the next few days so you can see that low pressure clearing to our east and a bitterly cold northerly wind coming in and you can see those low pressure systems just spiraling in with the very unsettled flow and that's giving us our heavy snowfall and very cold conditions in places beyond that though that big westerly flow comes in as we saw on the gm and it gives us initially very mild conditions again look at the upper air temperatures pretty much no doubt that mild air is going to be sweeping in the gfs here very much does disintegrate it and even the far east could actually hang on to slightly colder air there again would still be well above freezing probably average conditions but it's not quite as mild as some of the runs were showing a few days ago and it's all because pressure is rising to our north and our east holding off the atlantic weather systems now if you run through it you can see it never produces anything majorly cold just halts the atlantic a bit keeping areas further southwards and eastwards slightly drier and in the longer range starts to try and pull in an easterly wind for a time um so yeah nothing substantial from the gfs here just building pressure to our north and our east but if this did come off chances would be that it would pull in a slack easterly flow it would be cold probably below average and there would be an increased risk of wintriness as eventually that high pressure 
would start to drag very cold air out. And you can see through northern eastern Europe, it's not amazingly cold. It's not minus 10, it's minus 20 degrees at 850 HP, which can be in this pattern, more around the minus 5 to minus 10 level. But that's cold enough for widespread snow for the UK. So if that did, uh, easterly wind did come in, it would be very cold if this pattern came off. Very interesting signs, trying to build a uh, Scandinavian high in. There are some ensemble members, as we'll see at the end of the video, that do properly get the, that easterly wind in and turn us bitterly cold, but they are a minority option at this stage. Just want to keep an eye on what's happened uh, or happening. Um, some of you may also know that the sun stratosphere warming that we've been alluding to over the last couple of weeks is looking increasingly likely. Um, I haven't done a video on it in the last sort of few days because we have been concentrating on the cold weather next week. But in the next couple of days, I will probably put a video out updating you on that because that really could spice up February when those impacts come through. Again, not guaranteed we'll see an actual sudden stratospheric warming, but a major warming in the stratosphere, disruption of the polar vortex, um, and a major weakening in the in the in the zonal winds up in the uh, stratosphere uh, is looking pretty pretty likely now. Uh, again, will we see a reversal? We'll have to see near the time, but that could also increase the chances of blocking. Um, and yes, I did say at the start of the winter with the winter look at I suspect we'll have a milder second half of the winter. We've seen a lot of mild weather the last three or four weeks, but things are shaping up to potentially be very cold to end January. Not only with this cold weather coming up the next week, but if this Scandinavian high came in, even though it's not looking bitterly cold, it would keep us generally average and maybe below average if the easterly wind came in. And of course, sun strikes very warming uh, or a general disruption to the polar vote vortex could turn us much colder into February as well for at least a time. So again, have to see what happens. If you look at the GEM, see how that does compare over the next 10 days. Again, very cold air coming in at the moment. Eventually those mild conditions come in, but higher pressure does build to our north and our east. Low pressure still tries to run in off the Atlantic, but you can see cold air is gathering towards Eastern Europe and trying to pull in from the east. But, again, nothing substantial here. Again, we're probably on slightly milder, more unsettled side of the uh, weather pattern here. So the north and west would still be quite rainy and miserable there. And again, sometimes you get a bit of a stall in these low pressure systems. It can dump a lot of rain in the west where we really don't need the rain at the moment as we've got a lot of flooding flooding uh, issues, of course, that we alluded to at the start of the video. Now, if we do go and finish by having the ECM WF for the next 10 days, again, low pressure running in at the moment, a northerly wind coming in. And you can see again, high pressure Building for the end of the month, um, and, and, and towards the end of this run in general, to our north and our east. Again, sitting more over the top of us in a generally milder air mass. Uh, nothing particularly exceptional for this time of year. Um, you can see that it's actually quite mild, actually, at day 10. But there could be a bit of an inversion under that, so it could be pro well, it probably would be slightly cooler, uh, actually, under that higher pressure system. Um, and there is a chance that it does turn easily, but again... No real signs of any major cold, just the potential in the long term towards the end of January. But regardless, I think uh, high pressure building is, is a pretty good idea, um, as it will turn us drier, even if it is milder. If we do now have a look at the uh, ensembles, you can see very cold over the next week from the latest GFS ensembles, turning more towards average for the end of January, but there's a lot of scatter. Most runs are around average, some slightly below, slightly, some slightly above. No huge mild runs. Don't get it up to all stuff 10 degrees at 850 HPA, which uh, we have seen over the past couple of weeks. But as I said, there are quite a few minus 5 to minus 10 in the longer range, slightly drier on the precipitation as well, indicating higher pressure, more in control, and some bitterly cold runs there, including the control run. Again, would probably be pulling in a bitterly cold easterly or northeasterly wind. Again, signs that that could creep up on us for the end of the month but nothing concrete at this stage of course we've got to concentrate on the snow coming uh, snow and cold coming this week again look at the dew points quite cold over the next week and those dew points don't rise all too much again showing you probably quite a chilly air mass over the top of us and maybe quite cold and the two meter temperatures are going to be bitterly cold this week hardly getting above freezing again the ensemble members are overdoing it a bit but even in the longer range the majority of the ensemble members don't get as much above five or six degrees which is average or maybe even slightly below average in, in london at least again it's uh, just the mean of the ensemble members so some of course are colder than it will be and some are milder than it will be um, and we'll just have to see but no real signs of anything majorly mild and majorly westerly in the longer term if we finish by having the ECMWF on soil members, 
Again, a pretty similar signal, very cold for the next week, maybe more above average from the majority of the members by a degree or so, but still we've got quite a few of those colder outliers and generally higher pressure building in with things slightly drier as we head towards the end of the month. So yeah, very interesting conditions coming in the next week or so. Very cold and potentially quite snowy in places. Again, you have to keep up to date with the weather warnings and I'll keep you up to date with the latest models as they are chopping and changing exact positioning of these little low pressure systems and disturbances and the intensities of those systems as well, which will drastically change the areas that see snow and the intensity of that snow. Um, and then of course, into longer range as well, potentially high pressure building back in generally with milder air masses initially or average air masses Masses, but it could start to come t turn colder into the last week of January as well. But we'll have to see what happens. But anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you stay south, safe out there. Very destructive weather, not only with the flooding at the moment, but then the cold with the ice and snow coming. So make sure you do stay safe out there. And I'll see you again for another video soon.